Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, our annual Lawrence Stracey debate. It's an evening to remember Lawrence and to keep alive just one aspect of his personality, which was a good-humoured and lively debate, followed by a good drink. <laughs> On the professional level, I have huge respect for Lawrence, and it's wonderful that Farrows have got behind remembering him in this way. On, on this basis. And secondly, as a friend and a colleague, he was a really nice person to have around. He had a lovely sense of humour, incredibly twinkling blue eyes. He was a big lad. But, you know, altogether a professional colleague and an altogether good bloke. So here's to Lawrence. I think of him often. Thank you. Mr Chair, ladies and gentlemen, Armando and I will be proposing the motion that the people are never wrong and the politicians are rarely right. To be clear, we will be self focusing solely on the Western democracies. We will be arguing for the side which presents that the ordinary members of the public are well aware to make political decisions that is in their best interest and will benefit the public good. We will also argue on the matter that politicians such as Jonathan are not capable of understanding the people outside of their social circle. Yeah, yeah. Most politicians want to meet the needs of as many people in society. Trying to please everyone will be impossible. This means that competing interests will not be taken into as much consideration as the majorities. But surely, the majority does not represent everyone. The very first episode of The Thick of It has politicians in the back of a car having to come up with an announcement within 45 minutes that doesn't cost anything uh, because they have no money. Uh, and I actually asked the actors in the scene to improvise. We turned the cameras on and they improvised and they came up with um, three policies which are now law, in fact. <laughs> after Nabila and after Nadia and after Amando, and I think we're all great fans of his programmes. My criticism of his programmes wouldn't be that he uh, undermines trust in the political system. It's that he's made a program that most people in politics now think of as being a training video. <laughs> However, many MPs look very similar, rather like Jonathan and Armando. Excuse me, I've got more hair than Armando. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Old white men. <laughs> Referring to how politics may bore people, this is probably because people have busy lives and care about their own pets, families, and football teams more than they do about what the best type of sewage system we should install in London. <laughs> we need politicians and think, tank, think tanks and civil servants to help find solutions to these tricky but boring problems. Political leaders those leaders who are in power are increasingly ignoring the voter, whether they're a majority or a minority. Political leaders, prime ministers, are ruling by diktat and assuming that once they're in power, they have total power that doesn't need a popular mandate from the public. It's April 1938. The Austrians have got a vote on whether they want to link their fate with Hitler's Germany. 99.7% of them vote yes. A great call. The people are never wrong. Are politicians really protecting the nation's well-being, or are they cutting back on the funding which will surely affect the efficiency of the performance of the medical institutions, affecting millions of people using the service? We are users of the public services, and the incessant cuts being made to these public services affect the day-to-day -day lives of average people. We do not see the likes of Theresa May hopping on the bus or the tube to attend a cabinet meeting now, do we? She lives in the security bubble, not having to face the commute most British people do. For instance, the same way doctors are trained to make people better by going to medical school and engineers are trained to make sure buildings stand up, also applies to politicians. They are qualified by the state to make laws and look out not only for the interest of the people, but for its good. We have general elections to choose our representatives, to choose our representatives with whom I have a very profound and sterling belief in their wisdom 
and, and who I think we should listen to all the more. I am very happy to collect words of wisdom by politicians over the years, uh, because I think really it's what politicians say to us and not the people, those oiks with spare bedrooms and inability to afford accountants to help them get their taxes down. I think we should listen to what politicians say because they are glorious founts of wisdom. It's 1692, Salem, Massachusetts. The people decide that their next door neighbors aren't their neighbors anymore, they're witches. Over the next few months in the frenzy of the witch trials, <laughs> they rightly discern that living in their midst are a group of people masquerading as their neighbours, but actually probably politicians. Many US politicians want to make sure they get re-elected, so they raise money for insignificant projects. One famous example is the Bridge to Nowhere in Alaska, dubbed as a national embarrassment costing $320 million for federal taxpayers, even though only 50 people lived on the island. This is a symbol of financial irresponsibility of politicians. Also, the Garden Bridge proposed by Boris Johnson, which was perhaps created so that Boris would be able to have dinner with um, Joanna Lumley. <laughs> if you're to glance at history, we have seen many great politicians that have made Great Britain a great society today. But politicians like Churchill, Adley, Lloyd George, Gladstone, Jonathan Hill, and Boris Johnson. I, I wrote that bit. <laughs> in the 1950s, 80, 90% of people voted in elections, and parties got in on 51, 52% of the vote. Now, it's shrunk to about 67% of, of the electorate voting, and parties getting in as currently on 37% of that small vote. The system is broken, and when something is broken, it either does nothing or it becomes very dangerous. And it is in that vacuum, that danger, that I think the rather worrying trends that Nadia picked up on are emerging. But in the last 70 years, we've had two prime ministers, a Churchill, a Thatcher, who were prepared to challenge the consensus of the time and lead the country in a new direction. We had Attlee who introduced sweeping reforms that continue to shape our country today. And somehow on this little island, we still manage to be the world's fifth biggest economy. We're living longer in greater prosperity than at any time in our history. So we're quick enough to blame politicians when things go wrong. So shouldn't we also acknowledge it perhaps when things go right? To conclude, people can be trusted to make decisions for themselves, instead of placing the responsibility to politicians who behave childishly during Prime Minister's question times and prefer to focus on their image than their policy. Madam, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for all these reasons, I beg you to propose a motion. It may be hard to believe, but politicians may not be as popular as they should because they must uphold the law, which has been developed by experts over many years and be an example. Even in the face of public opposition, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen, for all these reasons, I beg you, oppose the motion. Thank you. So that's why I'm urging you to vote for this motion, not because I hate politicians or we loathe the political process, but because we need to send out a very, very clear message once and for all that it is the voter that has to be at the front and centre of the democratic process and not the politician. Thank you very much. But I'm confident that there will be many in this room who still believe in the power of reason who still think that facts matter, <laughs> who still think, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's David Smelly here, <laughs> who still think that our politicians do their best in a difficult world, who don't just think the worst of people and look to exaggerate the things that divide us. So to all of you, I say, 
Come and join Nadia. Come and join me. Reject rage. Vote for hope. Vote for reason. And defeat this motion. Okay.